All right, good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about reactions and a couple other things. We're going to go over a little bit of your lab to help you out and make sure that you are on the right track. That is due today. So hopefully we're uh, going in the right direction on that. So uh, let's talk about the schedule. So today, uh, equations two and your lab at are due. If you haven't handed that in yet, I'm going to help you a little bit with a couple things just to make sure that you are thinking about some of the uh, items that you might need to include. On the ending of that, it says they include a paragraph. Uh, you don't need to necessarily talk about all seven reactions. You could talk about like one or two, like ones that you really enjoyed. I might talk about things like the gas split test. You guys have a pretty cool idea. Let's stay focused, please. Last hour, we talked about also moving people. Once we move it, you're moved. So, anyway, uh, talking about the lab. If you've handed this in already, that's great. I want to point out a couple things, though. Everything that was underlined is helping you with products and reactants. So, if it's early, like in the first part, uh, then it's probably a reactant. So, I have hydrochloric acid, I had magnesium, I need to put that in there. You need states, and you need the balance. So hopefully you did those things. Those are the things that we're going to be looking for. Are you doing those things? So for example, hydrochloric acid, if you put L, that's fine. We, we'll get to that later. That's technically an AQ, but that would be okay. Did you put a solid next to magnesium? Um, gas splint test. Thought that was pretty neat. Uh, with CO2 and, and H2 and, and O2, if it went out, it was CO2. If it kept burning, it was O2. If it whoop, then it was H2. So in this case, this one did whoop. So H2 gets kicked out. H was with chlorine. So if anything's, and we're gonna talk about it a lot today, if anything's kicked out, someone had to go in where the other one was. If you're kicked out of somewhere, someone else took that place. So hopefully it would make sense that that magnesium kicked out that H. So now magnesium's with chlorine. I'm gonna say this probably about 15 times a day. Every time you make a new compound, you gotta check the charges. So I got the magnesium, I got the chlorine. You need to look at where those are, and you need to figure out how to crisscross that stuff, okay? Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, in like reaction A, solutions. Solution is AQ, not L. I was seeing that a lot in people's labs yesterday when I was in the resource room. <coughs> so, make sure you don't have L, it's AQ, it's not a liquid, it's a solution because something was dissolved in something else, it's the definition of a solution. These are dissolved in water, so it's A. Q. So really, you had four things here, four underlines. Three of them are solutions, one, two, and three. The fourth one is an S. It tells you what that is. So hopefully you have that, and that is uh, due today. A lot of people have been handing it in already, but that is your first um, lab of this chapter. Uh, make sure that is in. With equations two, that is also due, which you had like a week on, I believe. I had it for about a week. All right. So, uh, all right. This is on our, uh, on our note sheet. It is really important if you had a hard time describing a reaction uh, in the lab and then going forward, actually I should quickly show that, sorry. Uh, next week, uh, this Friday, we are going to figure out how to reclaim uh, in the, uh, industries that do this all the time. You have metals or things that you would need, they're valuable, and they're sitting in a solution. Well, how do you get them back? Well, we can do chemistry to do that. We I mean, get it back, we get that metal back. Um, on Monday, we're going to figure out who's polluting the uh, bay uh, through uh, double replacement reactions. And we, uh, there's this uh, type of reaction that will create something that would settle into the bay um, and get into wildlife and, and, and uh, the ecosystem based on a double replacement reaction. And, and we can try to figure out where that comes from as well. So those are going to be some of the labs. And to describe a reaction, you need to know the signs of a chemical reaction. And there's four of them. Okay. One of them is color change. Now those are just uh, chains. Oh. On the left versus the right. The right side is all rusted. Right? There's definitely been a color change. Now we're going to have a bunch of different kinds of color changes. Sometimes it'll be in a solution, sometimes it'll be on our metals. But if something changes color, it's a color change. Now that doesn't mean that you take like a, a green crayon and you wipe it onto a, a piece of paper and go, color change. No, that's just crayon sitting on top of paper. It's still crayon, it's still paper. That's not a chemical reaction. That, that item, that thing has to change colors. Second one, and the big word, I've underlined all the ones that are the most important, gas. Evolution of gas. You gotta make, if you're making a gas, which a lot of times we see as bubbles, then we know that a chemical reaction occurred. So that looks like a metal in some acid and a lot of little bu bubbles coming up. 
So yeah, I know chemistry is happening. Light or heat? Underneath, you might want to write that one. It kind of helps kind of simplifies it if there's a change in temperature. It can get hot or cold, actually. There's reactions that actually get colder. Kind of weird, but it happens quite a bit. It's a, kind of odd to think about. Uh, that's a thermite reaction. Uh, every year, one of my, uh, as a final project, one of my AP students' uh, groups will do a thermite reaction. It's how they fuse like railroad ties together, basically creating molten iron. Um, if a teacher doesn't do this right, or students, you're supposed to do it outside, but if not, you need to trap it like in um, uh, sand. But there have been stories where teachers have done it like on the second floor of a building or a third floor. Like my chemistry room when I was in high school was on a third floor. They will melt right through the table, right through the floor, or go right to the next uh, floor. You can look right through the hole and see the people below you. Um, pretty dangerous stuff. So you got to do that stuff outside. A lot of heat. And then finally, what we're going to learn a little bit more today, a precipitate or a precipitation. It's when a solid forms, though. When a solid shows up out of nowhere, it's called a precipitate. So those are the four signs of the chemical reaction, and we will be talking a lot more about these uh, throughout the year. But it's really important to have that ammunition when you get into a reaction and you're like, I don't know how to describe this. These are some of the things that you could be saying. Here are some more live views of what you could see. So that's an example of a color change. Uh, gas, being, gas being produced. You saw this the other day. This is ammonium dichromate. That's the volcano reaction. This is a really cool reaction. Uh, usually I have a student every year do this one as well. This is um, nitrogen triiodide. It's a contact explosive. Meaning like if a fly or a feather would touch it, it explodes. A lot of times what the students do is they layer it. They, they put it on uh, filter paper and then they put it on ring stand, uh, rings on a ring stand and they make multiple discs and then they touch the bottom one and boom, 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 boom and they all explode by just touching the bottom one. But they can just go off by just going off. So you shut the door too hard in the room and there's vibration. It'll go off. I've come in the next morning and they've all been exploded already. But it's pretty sweet. He's just barely touching it with, it looks just like a sticker, a dowel, a wooden dowel. Boom. Just explodes. This you did in your either or lab. This is putting aluminum. You put aluminum in there on a Friday. You guys came back on a Monday and the thing was all swirled inside and it was this huge like copper snake sitting on the bottom and you had put just an aluminum wire in there before. So it's definitely changing color. Uh, we'll kind of discuss that today. And then finally a precipitate, which I have a demo that is a lot cooler than that one that I'll show you today. So, but just, I'm waiting for that one to end. Start over. Anytime. There we go. So it's just a clear, colorless uh, solution. They add a little drops. You guys did this on letter A of your labette. Um, and all of a sudden, uh, a solid shows. That's actually silver uh, nitrate. So you could get silver out of that. And you could reclaim silver. All oh, silver's lost in the solution. I can get it back. Okay? So. All right. Uh, I found this on a kid's website. How to remember, uh, you don't have to write this down. How to remember chemical reactions. Farts. So, you know, if, if, that, if that rings true with you, oh, yes, I remember farts. Uh, fizzes, aroma, replacement. So if anything fizzes, that would be bubbles. Aroma would have like a smell. Usually that means there's gas coming off. If anything's replaced uh, from the original substance, if a temperature changes, or uh, did the reaction produce a new substance. I wouldn't write that one down necessarily, but uh, there you go. There's a whole different uh, way of thinking about it. All right, so I'm going to talk about types of reactions. When I was a kid, I was a kid at one time, I, uh, every uh, Saturday morning I'd watch the Flintstones. So if you don't know the Flintstones, well, here you go. This is the intro and the uh, closing credits. <laughs>
was thinking like the soap opera of the Flintstones, or maybe this is a, the, the journey of a relationship. Okay, so first, you meet. Anybody know who that is? It's Barney. And he meets this girl. Who's that? No one knew last hour. Uh-oh. Uh. Runs with Eddie. Teddy. Teddy? Betty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Betty! Oh, wow, they're just, they're, they're a match. <laughs> Need. Oh my, look at that. Way to go, Bernie. And now they are a couple. So this kind of reaction would be uh, signifying a what? What type of reaction makes something, one thing out of multiple? Synthesis, right? This would be a synthesis. You don't have to write this down. I'm, I'm actually leading into something for extra credit for you. So uh, that's a synthesis. But in any relationship, you don't work at it, communicate, have give and take, bad things can happen. And that can lead back to that, the breakup. Dun, dun, dun. So that is decomposition, right? We start with one thing and we end with many. But like every breakup, sometimes it doesn't take the first time. So, you know what? Sometimes, you know, you're back together. But sometimes there's another woman. <laughs> What's her name? Wilma. Wilma. It's Wilma. And Wilma, she's, she has a nice... Black eyes, and <laughs> she usually has a bone in her hair, I think. And you know what? Barney got her some flowers, but Betty is not happy. <laughs> it's called the home wrecker. She's, she's uh, ruining their home. So that is a single replacement, right? You're switching one thing. So this was grouped together, and then you had someone by themselves, and you switch. I usually do this with the dancing couple. So I was going to fight, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, if you were in my class, I was talking about high school dances. So I looked up high school dances on YouTube. <laughs> but I searched in such a way about grinding and everything else. And every single one that I found that I wanted to use first said explicit, explicit uh, material. Do you want to continue? I'm like, I probably shouldn't be showing that in a large group. So I'm like, I'll just wait until problem when I chaperone. That'll be good enough. So I couldn't show it. So anyway, that, you get the, the idea with Wilma and Betty. And then sometimes there's a TV show. I think it's on CBS. You have two different couples. And it's called Wife Swap on the show. I think it's CBS. And they're like, hey, let's try to see, live in someone else's shoes for like three days, which is realistic. Uh, and that, instead of one switching, there are two switching. So that is considered a double replacement. So those are four of the five that we talked about the other day. The fifth one uh, is combustion. I already have it written there, but I just put up like an internal combustion engine. Uh, you put in fuel. So if you ever heard of it being referred to or how much octane it has, well, how much octane it has? It all has octane. It has eight carbons. So uh, it goes into the cylinder with some oxygen. It's going in right here. There's a spark plug. It causes the piston to go. Uh, and the reaction occurs. And what, come on, we're turning. There it is. And then the byproduct, let's go get out comes out this way, CO2 comes out, and H2O. What happens is a lot of people get really confused with combustion because all we'll say is like the combustion of propane or the combustion of this, and we'll give you the formula of that. We'll give you this formula, and then you're like, you didn't give me anything else. These are always the same. It always reacts with oxygen. It always produces CO2. It always produces H2O if a hydrocarbon is reacting. Okay? So, we have an extra credit opportunity for you. I don't always care about my grade, but when I do, it's the end of the quarter, and even though I didn't do all the assignments, I'll ask for credit, extra credit now. Um, anyway, I, I, like I, I could watch that all day, I have no idea why. Uh, here is your extra credit opportunity. It, there's no word. If you want to write it down, that's, that's great, because uh, it's, it's this Friday or none at all. You can create a fun poster like the Flintstones or whatever, illustrating one type of reaction. Okay? It can be as large as two sheets of paper. That's it. This is as large as it can be. Okay? So if you want to create that, that's great. You can do single, double, whatever. You can draw it, you can copy, uh, or, uh, copy and paste, you can cut it out of magazines, but it has to be your own work. Can't find one online. We know what they look like online. We definitely know what those look like online. But if you want to do that, that is going to be due by Friday. So it's an extra opportunity. We don't give you this a lot. 
Okay, if you're interested in doing it, but only if you're interested in it. it it's not after Friday. So take care of that if you'd like to. And, and the more time you put into that, the better off you'll be uh, for points. So think of it as like an extra um, science report kind of thing, but it's an extra one. It's not uh, the normal one that you have. Uh, so any questions about that though? Yeah? No, so like for example, you want to do double replacement. You're not going to do Flintstones, but if you want to do this, all you got to do is have a nice title. You should have a title of the type of reaction, and then it should illustrate it without any explanation. It shouldn't need an explanation. Yeah? How big would you like a piece of this? At least a piece of paper, no more than two pieces of paper. At least one, not two. I do not want a tri-fold uh, poster board. Like now I will present my extra credit. Like, <laughs> not a presentation. You have a pointer and everything, and that concludes my presentation. Uh, that's not the way it will work. Okay? So, any other questions on that? All right. Away we go. Activity series. This is in your note sheet. So we are going to talk about how reactions go. We have two labs coming up. One about activities series with single replacement. One with double replacement uh, reactions. Okay? So on your sheet, you have a whole list of elements. And this element uh, list is called an activity series. And all it really is, is a list of how reactive or how active uh, the elements are compared to each other. So you don't have to have these memorized. You'll always have access to these. But just to point out, like lithium is the most active on this list. Gold is the least active. We'll talk about this a lot later, but gold, sorry, silver, platinum, and gold, where do you find a lot of those? In, oh boy. Jewelry stores? Yeah, maybe. You're all like, my, my rims on my Prius? Maybe, maybe. I got spinning rims on my Prius. Platinum ones. We'll talk about that later, but there's a big reason why those are so precious and why they work out. Like, my ring is still platinum. If it was made out of something else, as a chemistry teacher, I probably wouldn't have a platinum ring anymore if platinum was way up here. I'd probably have something else. I'd come home and all of a sudden it'd be like aluminum. You'd be like, what happened? Well, I'll show you what I mean by that today. So. Here we go. We are going to predict if some of these react or not. Okay? So we have four reactions in the beginning we're going to talk about. Here's how this works. Just like Betty and, and Barney, the element on the outside has to come in. We talked about this in class the other day too with dancing. Has to come in and kick out the other element. Okay? So all you need to do is find the Fe and another element that it's going to try to kick out. They need to be on the same list. So to be on the first one, I'll just show it to you. Here's Fe, and copper is right here. Okay. So copper is lower than Fe. What you need to keep straight is that the element outside of the pairing, outside of the solution, is the one that's trying to kick out the one in the solution. So Fe is higher than Cu, so the reaction will occur, and they are going to switch places. Okay, so here we go. Cu is kicked out. Boom, kicked out a solution. And we're going to show you a bunch of examples with that, but um, we're going to go through how they kind of work first. Cu is kicked out, Fe goes in. Now, if you're sitting there going, well, where the heck do all these numbers come from? There are two things that we constantly have to remember. One, when something's by itself, is it a diatomic? This is going to become obnoxious because we're going to say this all the time. Is that a diatomic? It's HNO and all the halogens. So uh, Cu, nope, not a halogen. So it stays like that. Where do all these numbers come from? Every time I make a new compound, I gotta check my charges. Every time. Every time I make a new compound. And that's gonna be the hardest thing for you guys. You don't just look here and go, oh, there's no numbers here. I can't put numbers here. Something new is made. That's what chemistry is. So I look it up. Unfortunately, this is slightly poor example because I didn't tell you the charge of Fe. Fe is a three plus. Sulfate's a two minus. So what do I do? I crisscross. And that's where those two numbers come from. All right. You do need to balance this. You should balance this. Um, so if there's a 3 in the SO4, you should put a 3 there. Uh, there's CU right there. So you, you should put a 3 then in front of the CU. And then you put a 2 in front of the FE. Lastly, there are states of matter. These are truly switching places. Truly switching places. So I believe I don't have states here, but you have them. If this is a solid and that solution, the solid goes in, the thing that was in solution goes out. So that will become now a solid. This now will become a solution, a.k.a. a cube. So this is S, and this is a cube. OK? All right, next one. Will Ni be able to kick out Na? 
Again, Ni has to be higher than Na. The answer is no. Ni is lower than Na. So, on, you're going to like these in worksheets, you're going to hate this in the lab, because if there's no reaction, it's not very fun. So, you just write no reaction. There's nothing more to do. It doesn't react. It's just no reaction. Okay. So, it, it, it never will. You'll just drop it in and be like, all right, what's going to happen? Like, we can predict. It's kind of neat. We can actually predict what's going to happen in reactions before we even do them. All right, so can Li kick out Zn? Yes. Yes, Li is the highest one. So here we go. Li is higher than Zn. So those are going to switch places. And you're always going to have access to this activity series. So Zn's kicked out. Li goes in. The reason why there's a 2 there is CO3 has a 2 minus charge. We're giving you the polyatomic ions. It's on your survival guide. So you can definitely use them. And then you need to balance them. Again, this will not be the solid. This will be the AQ. And then lastly, can AL kick out CU? Yeah. Yeah. AL's here. CU's way down here. You've got to just keep it straight. The one by itself. Now, please... I didn't do a good job with this. I should have like once in a while flipped these. The one by itself will always be the one you're looking at first. So even if this is here and AL is just by itself, you're still looking at AL being the higher one, yes or no kind of thing. So yes, AL is higher than CU. So AL and CU are going to switch places. So it becomes that. Now why is that at three? Most people on a test right now, you guys would write another two. Hey, there's a two here. I'm going to put two here. Every time I write a new compound, I need to check the charges. So AL has a 3 charge, CL has a minus 1, I have to crisscross. The more you can have that just in the back of your head, oh, I made something new, I need to check the charges. I don't look at these numbers, I gotta, I gotta look at the periodic table. And then you should balance some reminder on that, 2's and 3's. 2's and 3's make 6, so I want to put a 3 here and a 2 there right away to make 6 and then clean it up with the CU and the AL. So that's the activity series. The issue is, there's more to it. On your sheet, there's another little list. What I'd strongly suggest doing is putting a, a horizontal line in between them to make sure that you understand that those are two separate lists. Okay? So this one is, except for H, these are all metals. These are halogens. All right, so let's take a look at how that works. And we, I think we only have like three more. So I have chlorine and I have NABR. Here's the trick. You're going to say, oh, chlorine, all right. Chlorine and Na, can chlorine kick out Na? Oh, here's Na, and I'm looking, and you're like, man, I can't find it. Oh, wait, here's chlorine. Wait, I don't know how that works. They need to be on the same list. So, chlorine's not trying to kick out Na. Chlorine's trying to kick out the other halogen. So, can chlorine kick out Br? Yes, yes because it's higher. Whoops. Chlorine is higher than Br. All right, so the chlorine's going to kick out the Br. The chlorine's going to go on the back half of that. It's not going to go in the front of Na. It's going to go on the back side of Na because that's where Br was. Okay? So Br comes out and uh, Cl goes in. Oh, where does the 2 go and why does that have a 2? Every time something's by itself, you have to ask yourself, is it a diatomic? Br is a halogen. I'll show you a nice little trick in a second. And then Cl goes in. Every time I make a compound, I need to check my charges. All this takes is practice. You just do it, and then you start realizing, oh, I have to do it like that. Oh, okay, it starts to work. Uh, balancing, I need to put a two here and a two there. So, we told you you need to memorize seven diatomics. You really only need to memorize two. Because you're going to be given this list. These four are halogens. They already have a two in them. So that helps. And the H is right here. So if heck no halogens, you just got rid of H and all the halogens. So all you have to remember is no! Or on. But that sounds less exciting. So, just have to remember N and O. All the other ones are given to you, actually. Can I kick out anything? No. No, it's going to try to kick out CL, but it can't. So I write no reaction. So, will the last reaction happen? trying to trick you. Mg is right here. You have to find something on the list, the same list as Mg. So if you're looking for F, Mg and F are not on the same list. Well, how do you know which list? Because the one by itself is the one trying to get in. Okay, that's the one trying to kick out. 
So you have to find something it can kick out. So it's trying to kick out the Ni, which it can, because Ni is lower than Mg. So Ni is kicked out, Mg goes in. The reason why there's still a two there is because Mg has a two plus charge and um, F has a minus one. So it still works out. All right, so we're going to take a little look. We're not done. We're, you're getting two different sheets, but you're working on this over a week's time. I'm going to do some work with you right now. We're going to work on single replacement reactions. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's an extra page. So on your sheet, you have an activity series on the front and the back, so we're not making you have to flip back and forth. Uh, you can write all over them as you're working on them as well. Right? So I'm going to do one, two, three, and then seven. It'll give you a good idea how this all works. So it looks like we almost have them all. So you need to write them out. So first one, number one, it says copper plus iron two and iron two nitrate. And that's all it'll say. We got to predict the products. So, whenever it just says a metal, we just write Cu. Or, well, whatever metal. In this case, it says copper. Iron 2 nitrate. Again, this is going to be hard for some of you. If you don't get it completely right, it's still, you can still do the reactions, though. This is how I'd suggest doing it. You write the iron. You look up nitrate. Why do I know I have to look it up? Because it ends in 8. I have my sheet. You have a little survival guide. It's right on the polytonic ion sheet. So, at some point, it comes down to effort. Like, Am I willing to look at a piece of paper and find the answer? If you want to call that effort. This is 2 plus. This on the sheet is 1 minus, so they cross. So the 2 comes down here. So now, the question is, will it react? Okay. So don't write out what it makes yet. If you're starting to do that, I won't. Because I'll show you what you need to do. What am I looking for? Does, is CU or FE the one that's trying to kick out the other one? Which one's trying to do the kicking out? CU, the one by itself. So can CU on my list kick out FE? No. no. So all I got to do, I don't even have to write products. I just write no reaction. It cannot do it. On my list, if you're visually looking at it, FE is higher than CU. What happens is in a week from now, this is what a lot of you will do. That's, you'll say exactly what I just said. Well, FE is higher than CU. It'll happen. Got to keep it straight that the one by itself is the one trying to kick it out. Okay. Number two, sodium, that's Na, and dihydrogen monoxide, fancy way of saying water, but write it like this, please, starting today in a reaction, HOH, it helps. Water behaves like HOH, not H2O. The reason why is that water breaks up into H, it's called hydronium ion, and OH, which is a hydroxide ion. Those are actually the bases of, of pH. So if something's really acidic, they have a lot of H's. If there's something really basic, they have a lot of OH's. Water is neutral because they have both in equal amounts. That's why water is perfectly neutral. If you write it like this, you'll get these answers correct because water stays together like H and OH. So Na is trying to kick out the H. So can Na kick out the H? Na is there. Don't be, con oh, I think it's right there. <laughs> Don't be confused by the two. H2 is the same as H for us right now. H is much lower. So H is kicked out. Na goes in. Every time I write an element by itself, I need to ask myself, is it a diatomic? In the list, it even tells me. Yes, it's H2. Every time I make a new compound, I have to check the charges. Na is plus one. I got to look up OH on my, uh, my polyatomic ion sheet. That's one minus. Plus one, minus one, done. Balancing is easier with this as well. I have two H's here. I only have one. Oh, wait, no, you have two. Nope, that's OH. I have one H. So I put a two. 
Oh, now I have two OHs. So I put a two. Oh, I have two NAs. I put a two. If you do that with H2O, it's not as clear. Right. Two more. Then we'll get to our last topic. Zinc. Plus sulfuric acid. You're like, oh no, I forgot how to do acids. Well, I remember something. I remember that all acids start with H's that we're studying. And then I remember that whole ick thing. Ick from eight. I ate something icky. So if I look up on a period, uh, the polyatomic ion sheet, sulfate it came from. Sulfate, when I'm looking it up, I just look at the charges. I'm looking it up. That has a two. So the two, bless you, comes down to that. Is that going to happen? Yes. Zinc is higher than H2, and you can see it right on your sheet. Zinc is higher than H2, so yes, it's going to happen. So again, H is kicked out. Zinc goes with the SO4. Every time I make a new compound, I've got to check my charges. Zinc is 2 plus. That's one that we have to memorize, or it's on the table in group 12. 12 with a 2 is 2, and SO4 is 2 minus. So this one's actually balanced. Which leaves us with our last one. Fluorine and sodium chloride. Every time I write something, man, I'm getting repetitive. Every time I write something by itself, I have to ask if it's diatomic. F is. It also says that right on my chart. Every time I make a new compound or write a compound, I gotta check my charges. Na is plus one, right from the table, group one. Cl is one away from the uh, noble gases, so that's minus one, so one, one, that's good. So what's F trying to do? Yeah. Trying to kick out Cl. Can it do it? Yes, because F is above Cl, so Cl's out. F is in. This is wrong. I'm going to write it wrong, incorrectly. That is not correctly written. The reason why is that F has to go in the location that Cl was. You always got to go where it existed, okay? Because Cl's a, uh, F and Cl would have negative charges, so they'd be written second. I know that F and Cl are the same charges, so that would be good. Does Cl need a diatomic? Yes. And I balance it. So that is single replacement. Reactions, yeah. Oh, good question. So wait, does this F need something? When a diatomic is in a bond, a lot of us will want to put twos. It's only when they're by themselves. If they're not by themselves, then they behave with their charges. So this could have a two on here. If it had a two, it would, be because it would only be because this thing had a plus two charge, and then the two would come down. Otherwise, b this is plus one, minus one, so that's why there's no number. Great question. All right. Uh, we're going to flip to the back side of our note sheet. And we don't have a lot of examples on the back side. And I have a pretty cool double game. You're dinner with your best friend. Fine conversation, fine wine, some barbecued beef cheeks. You look outside to admire the full moon, but when you glance back, you realize that your friend has turned into a werewolf. Fortunately, the cutlery is made of silver, and you know how to use it. Or perhaps you're in the bath one day, and as you reach for the soap, you notice a wart on your big toe. Well, squeeze a little silver nitrate on that big boy, and you'll be ready for sandal season in no time. Shiny, electrically conductive, and oh-so-useful silver has been valued since ancient times. It has a reputation for purity and war off evil, whether in the form of werewolves or warts. Silver was also a big driver of settlement in the western United States, including Montana, where I live. And of course, all that silver got here because of chemistry. Specifically, it's here because of countless chemical reactions that took place over the eons called precipitation reactions, when chemicals in a solution react to form a solid. Precipitation reactions are what create geological deposits in the earth as well as rings around your bathtub. They're what we use to make our wastewater drinkable and they've been used by folks for thousands of years 
to get rich. Because precipitation reactions happen to be one of the best ways to produce chemicals of the highest purity. So the not only the key to how silver was deposited in these mountains hundreds of millions of years ago, they're also the key to getting that silver back out. I can do it right here on this desk, and all I need to get started is this. Alright, we would watch more, but we're gonna get crunched for time. So what we are going to talk about are double replacement reactions. Specifically, what he's talking about is precipitate. Okay, so, oh my gosh, what's all this? These are called solubility rules. No, I don't have this. This isn't going to pop up, so you need to write this down. There are two important words you need to understand. What is soluble and what is insoluble. This will always be provided to you. All you need to do is understand how to read it. You will always be given it. So on your note sheet, there's a much smaller version. On a worksheet you're going to get, it has this bigger one, but it just spells out some things. If something is soluble, it will dissolve in solution. It dissolves in solution. And what I would do is I put a parenthesis with an AQ in it. When something is soluble, it is aqueous. So again, trying to give you this definition here. It dissolves in solution, and then I do parenthesis AQ. That's what's soluble. And the reason why you got to know these two words is that our solubility rules use these two terms. Insoluble means it does not dissolve. So that would mean that, think of anything, if you throw it into water and you try to mix it up and it just doesn't dissolve, it would stay like a powder or a rock or whatever. So it would stay as a solid. So it would be an S. It's a little confusing. The solubility, or if you're soluble, your AQ, if you're insoluble, your S. People get confused with the S's. S means solid, though, right? Not soluble. So when I'm reading this, and I'm not going to go through each of these, but I do want you to just realize, besides number two, it's not about memorizing. It's not about memorizing this. All the other ones have negative charges. So what we're going to be doing in a minute, we have three examples. That's all. I think. I think that was it. We're going to look at the anion, the negative ion, to try to figure out if these things dissolve or not. I'm going to show you a really cool demo as we're doing this uh, to see how this all works. Okay, so uh, we'll come back to this. You have it on your sheet. Here we go. So in the demo, you have uh, lead nitrate. I think I've already spelled that out for you. And Ki. So I have that right here. So well, I'll leave it down here for now. We'll put it up. So here are my two solutions. This is just a little white because it's not all dissolved yet. Here are my two solutions. All right, so this is a, an example of a double replacement reaction. The reason why I know that is because there are pairs. There's a positive ion and a negative. Even though there's more than one here, it's a polyatomic ion, and then here's a positive, here's a negative. Two pairs. So I, right away, I can, as we do this more, you'll be better at it, I can recognize that these are going to switch partners. It's very important, though. They only switch with certain partners. Positives will switch with positives or negatives with negatives, but you can't have K with PB. Those are two positives. You can't have the negative with the other negative. So I hope that it makes sense. It can be either way. It can be this one first. That these, these would be the products that would be made in a double replacement <coughs> reaction. Notice what happened. The PB now has a new partner, and the K has a new partner. Where do those partners come from? They're within the reactants already. Okay. Why are the numbers the way they are? I have to do new crisscrossing. So I notice that PB had a two charge. I know that I has a minus one, so a two and a one becomes PBI two. That two disappears. And then we can balance it. If you're not balancing reactions, probably about nine times out of 10 you should have to balance. If you finish it and you're like, hey, I'm done. You might have just generically grabbed the two because it's on the other side. Those twos are there, or the whatever numbers, because crisscrossing. You got to do new uh, crossing of charges. Okay, here's the thing. I got to figure out the states of matter and the solubility rules will tell us that and then I'll show you. So, not about memorizing. Number one on your solubility rules, which is in your upper right corner of your sheet, says that all nitrates are soluble. So that has a nitrate in it. Sweet. So that means that that would probably be AQ. It doesn't say anything about exceptions. That probably is. Well, I'll hammer it home. Number two says, this, I'm trying to show you how we kind of read this. And you can do arrows if you'd like or just note that this K says that all alkali metals are also soluble. So they both say they're soluble. You only needed one. They both say it. So that has to be an AQ. That's how that works. So that's going to dissolve. 
Wow, exciting. Well, in a minute you'll see. They're actually pretty exciting, certain ones. So, the question is, is this a solid or is this AQ? It's not automatically a solid. You can have two AQs, but you can't have two solids. So if you ever do find a solid, you're done. If you did the other one first and it made it a solid right away. Well, let's see if this makes a solid. All right. You always look at the second one. That, that, the, the anion is hidden in the, alco or in the solubility rule. So I is in number three. It says chlorides, bromides, and iodides, salts are soluble. Uh-oh, shoot. That's going to be another AQ. Oh, wait a minute. Exceptions. Salts containing the ions with these of AG, PB, or HG are insoluble. Oh, PB. It's not about memorizing. So that trumps it. Because of that, that makes it a solid. Well, what's the big deal? Well, this is the big deal. Mm -hmm. So this is K, uh, Ki, okay? This is PbNO3. And the signs of a chemical reaction are color change, gas, heat or light, and the fourth one, A, precipitate. Now that is a solid. You're like, no, that's smoke. No, it's a really fine solid that it's like sand. And I only want to put a little bit in first because it kind of cascades through the, the liquid. So if immediately a solid shows up, I know that a double replacement reaction happened. What is that yellow stuff? What is the yellow stuff? PBI2. By my solubility rules, this does not dissolve. And if I let it sit here long enough, it'll just settle down into the bottom and it'll be this really thick, fine uh, solid. But I can add more. And again, it, there's no trick here. This is kind of a slightly uh, opaque liquid into a, a colorless, clear liquid. And I can just add more and more. And it would just create the precipitate. Now, there's precipitates that are white, yellow, red, blue. You're going to do them all on Monday. Not this big. <laughs> you don't get two liters of liquid every time. But uh, we're going to be working on those and, and seeing that. So I'm going to try not to disrupt this too much and see how much it settles out at the end. But that is uh, evidence of a precipitate. Uh, pretty cool one. Okay, so let's just do two more examples uh, and then we'll look at our other note sheet. Again, you're going to have both these sheets. You're going to get two worksheets because in the next week we're working on both types of reactions. These are the most important two that we have. The other one's not going to be due for over a week. Uh, but Let's talk, I think I only have two more examples. So here we go, Na2SO4 and BaCl2. So we start as solutions. Do I have states already there for you? Do they start? Okay, mm. good. So I hope it makes sense, again, that the Na is gonna not be paired with the Cl, right? And the Ba is gonna be with the SO4. Like they're gonna switch. So let's write that out first. So, and it doesn't matter the order. Like why did you write NaCl first? Why didn't you write BaSO4? I could've, it's just addition. It doesn't really matter. But either way, that's how it's written. Why is it written like that? Wait a minute, you had a two here and a two here. Where are the twos? Every time I write a new compound, I gotta check the charges. Na is plus one, Cl is minus one. They, they balance out. Ba is two plus, I look up on my sheet that I'm given, SO4 is two minus, so there I go. So, I, I don't need you to ever be able to say, well, that's a number three. You just need to be able to find it. You look at the second half. Oh, CLs are always in number three. That one says it's soluble. Okay, that's good enough already because that is not linked with one of the exceptions. I can write AQ right now. I can hammer it home by saying the NA. You're going to start finding if it ever has an alkali metal, it's automatically soluble all the time. So that's AQ. You don't automatically say the other one's an S because it could be AQ. So what am I looking up? I'm not looking up BA. I'm looking up SO4, and that is in number four. And it says, oh shoot, sulfates are soluble, except, and literally it's, it's waiting for me. So if you're like, I don't know what to do, it's saying it's insoluble, so that is my S. So if I poured those two together and a solid came out, there I am. It's really important because if chemicals were ever like dumped in a lake or in, in any kind of situation, uh, um, if a solid comes out, you need to know what the heck that solid is. Uh, but you can also reclaim it. What the video was saying is that that's how they get silver out. Silver was trapped in different kinds of forms. You can get it, you can reclaim it through a 
um, a double replacement reaction. All right, the last one, um, you have to help me out. I, I messed it up. You have to fix it. I think that I flipped these. Aren't the MGs and the NAs in the wrong spots right now? Yeah. Please fix it. Like, it has to look like mine. I messed it up. And try not to cross it all out. Try to just write over it. Well, you can cross it out too. I, I messed this up. And this is our last example. And then we're going to just do a couple homework problems, and that'll be it. So these are still AQ. So sorry about the mess up here. So hopefully we understand. Again, the NA and the uh, MG are going to switch places. So it should look like that. Why is there a 2 on the BR? Because MG has a 2 plus charge. Did I not? Did I balance? Oh, shoot. Now the balancing isn't right. I need a 2 right here. A 2 goes right there. I had to fix this in between classes. So, Bear with me with my arrows. I don't know if they're all going to be pointing in the right spots. But the final, pro the final thing is all that matters here. Oh, boy. Here we go. Hey, uh, okay. so let's just, hey, NA, it goes there, that's soluble, what's happening? And that's supposed to go up to the NaOH, so that is clearly AQ. This one, BR, goes here, and it says it's soluble. So this is a problem, the dancing AQs. The fact that I have two AQs means that they all stayed in the same state. So they're all still floating around and nothing new was made. So like the other one, where no or, uh, if you weren't higher, there was no reaction. If there's no precipitate, you write no reaction. Because they were both AQ. There's no reaction. And keep in mind, please, that we're working on both these. These are going to be the main parts of your test, so we wanted to get them both out to you so you had time to work on them. Okay? I want to do uh, just three more problems for you. It helps you out. Notice I, we have given you the, uh, the solubility rules on your sheet and on the back. Again. Apologize, we're going to have to go through this a little quickly, but... We actually have more time than last hour. So AgNO3 and BaCl2. What you need to do is just quickly flip them. Even if you don't know the charges, you just flip them. So it's AgCl. This is how I would suggest doing it. Flip them first, and then just quickly go, OK, what are my charges? Like, I just flipped them. So Ag is in that group 11. We, that, there was two that you had to memorize. Zinc was 2 plus, Ag is uh, plus 1. CL is minus one. Hey, you know another trick? Instead of looking it up, you can reverse cross. Just look right here. Hey, there was no crossing here. If you just know one of the two charges, they're the same. This one, hey, reverse cross. Hey, there's a two here. So that's because it's not a polyatomic ion. I know the numbers come right from there. So BA is two plus, CL is minus one. This stuff helps a lot. So I know that BA is two plus, so it's got to come down here. So this would be a 2, and this would be a minus 1. And once again, I, this is why we did over 300 problems. Like, it wasn't because we needed to fill December with something. Then all i got to do is look these up. The minute I see nitrate, if you had to memorize one thing, memorize nitrates. If you had to memorize two, if it has an uh, alkali metal, these two right here, they're always soluble. So this one automatically, because of the nitrate. It says it's soluble. That's how I read that. Second one, I find CL. It's in number three. Oh, CL. Soluble. Oh, there's another line. It says exceptions. Oh, shoot. Containing AG. All right. That's an S. Good. So that one's my solid. I do need the balance. I need to put a two here and a two there. Next one. Again, don't worry about charges right away. So NA and OH are going to come together. Mg and PO4 are going to come together. All I'm doing is switching partners. Again, I can do reverse cross. The fact that a 2 came down here and nothing's over here, that means that this is minus 1. 
and Na, nothing crossed. So that's a plus one, or I can look at the periodic table. So one and one, that's good. Periodic table, this says this is a two. Heck, this three came from the PO4. So this is three, this is two. This comes down like that. If writing the formulas is going to be the hardest part for you, you still can get the states. You still can. It doesn't stop you. So you just find this, OH. OH, oh, most hydroxides are slightly soluble. I'll talk about what that means in a second. Oh, NaOH is soluble. Sweet. Soluble means AQ. You always look up the second thing, PO4. PO4 is in the last uh, step. It's, it's number six. Slightly. Need to address that. <clears throat> we are not in the lab when you're doing sheets. You'd actually have to check it out. Slightly means like, ah. like, if you have enough of it, it won't be. Like, everything can dissolve. Even a rock dissolves. But there's just too much of it. Everything dissolves if there's, if there's a, a, little, a little amount. So we don't know how much there is. Slightly loses. If something's soluble and something else is marginally or slightly, it will lose and that will become a solid. Okay? And then lastly, just to quickly get... Well, we just did this one. BANO3, it's the same, it doesn't change. It's still AQ. So then I gotta look up KCL. K is in number two, it says alkali metals. CL is in number three, it says halogens are always soluble except for these. Well, not with that. So these are both AQ. So what does that mean? Both AQ means no reaction. So on the side, I just write no reaction, I circle it. You should balance this. I think it needs balancing. I put a two. Two, three, six, one. Okay. So, is it important that you get a start at it? If you're like, well, I don't know where to start. Start on equations three. Start working on activity series. It's amazing when you start it, how it really starts to go. Can you guys get the power? Uh, types of reactions, lab at and equations two by the end of the day today. Extra credit by Friday. You want to do your extra credit poster? By Friday.